Now time for member statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Mr. Speaker, Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today to discuss Men's Cancer Health Awareness Month. The month of September is a time to highlight the many different types of cancers that men may be susceptible. Although it was impossible to determine a cancer diagnosis in advance, men should be cognizant of the top five cancers most susceptible to them. These cancers include prostate cancer, lung cancer, colorectal cancer, bladder cancer, and melanoma. Prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer among Canadian men, resulting in 24% of all cancer diagnoses. One in eight Canadian men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime, and it's estimated that 4,100 men died from this disease in 2015. Other shocking statistics include one in 12 Canadian men are expected to develop lung cancer during the lifetime, and one in 13 will die from it. One in 14 Canadian men are expected to develop colorectal cancer, and one in 29 will die from it. One in 27 Canadian men are expected to develop bladder cancer during the lifetime, and one in 82 will die from it. And one in 57 Canadian men are expected to develop melanoma during their lifetime, whereas one in 20, 227 will die from it. Mr. Speaker, the best preventative is a healthy lifestyle. The Canadian Men's Health Foundation runs a campaign called Don't Change Much. They emphasize small but critical changes that men can make in their day-to-day -day lives. It's a simplistic message, but it leads to healthier lifestyles and better outcomes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Other member statements, the member from Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. The Durham Region Employment Network, or DREN, has been helping people in my riding for 23 years, helping folks who want to participate in their community's economy but face multiple barriers and need additional support to find work. Sadly, DREN is facing closure due to lack of funding from the provincial government. This is a government that talks about accessibility and pretends it is a priority for them, but can't commit to a grassroots community agency that has been recognized by David Sionley and meets very real needs in Oshawa. Last week, I had the opportunity to meet with Donna McAllister, DREN's executive director, and she asked me, when the Agency for Helping Vulnerable People Find Jobs has to close because the government won't commit to funding it, what does that say? Well, Speaker, that's a great question. What does it say about the importance this government places on accessibility services? The never-ending precarious merry-go-round of project funding. Apply, wait, wonder, call, hope, call again, email, hope, wait, rinse, repeat. That's the model that this government has established to fund our frontline service providers? This government can say that accessibility is a priority, but actions speak louder than words. We need sustainable funding for DREN yep. and real commitment to support youth and all workers with disabilities. I support DREN, my community supports DREN, and I call on this Liberal government to finally commit to sustainable funding for an organization that helps those that need it most. Thank you. Thank you. you. For member Stevens, the member from Barry. Thank you, Speaker. On Saturday, September 17th, I attended Barry's seventh annual Walk a Mile in Her Shoes fundraiser in support of the Women and Children's Shelter of Barry. This unique event was founded by men who hoped to raise awareness about sexual and domestic violence by doing the walk in women's heels, and it now takes place in cities all across North America. This year's walk in Barry was the most successful ever, as approximately 300 people from all walks of life braved the rain and helped the shelter to raise about $40,000. Every year, over 200 women and children stay at the shelter, and another 1,800 are served through their community outreach programs. This is just a fraction of the 30,000 women and children in Ontario who seek refuge in shelters every year. This is why I'm proud that our government funds 2,000 beds across 96 shelters, where no woman in crisis is turned away. We have increased funding to help victims of domestic violence by 61 per cent since 2003, including a $20 million joint federal pilot project announced earlier this month to make it easier for 1,000 survivors a year to find safe housing. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank all the walkers and the volunteers who came out in Barrie and across the country to support victims of domestic violence. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Leeds, Brenda. Uh, thanks, uh, Speaker. Recently, I was honoured to participate in the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs annual general meeting. It was great to meet club representatives from across the province and to show our Ontario PC Caucus support for the, these incredible volunteers. 
Snowmobiling generates more than $1.7 billion in economic activity in Ontario annually and supports some 7,200 full-time jobs. The tremendous economic impact wouldn't exist without the dedication of OFSC clubs, including five in Leeds Grenville, the Athens and District Snowmobile Club, the Elizabethtown Snowmobile Club, Grenville Snowmobile Association, the Kempville Snowmobile Club, and the Rideau Ridge Runners Snowmobile Club. The AGM's highlight for the Leeds Grenville contingent was seeing Jim and Maureen Fenlong of the Athens Club named OFSC's 2006 Family of the Year. I can't think of a more deserving family speaker. This incredible duo has logged an amazing 45 years of volunteer service, from organizing events, fundraising, trail maintenance, signage, grooming, and 28 years as treasurer when there was a job to do, Jim and Maureen got it done. They did it for their love of this time-honored Canadian activity, not for recognition. And it was great to see their moment in the spotlight. Congratulations, Jim and Maureen. You're truly showing what it means to give back. And I also want to thank OFSC just quickly. I want to thank them for the opportunity uh, to come to their AGM, and I wish all snowmobile clubs the best for the winter ahead, and I look forward to working with you to make those trails even better. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements from member from Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker. This may seem a little bit like deja vu, but once again, Biblioasis, an independent literary press in my writing, has published a finalist in this year's Scotiabank Giller Prize. It's The Party Wall by Catherine LaRue. The book was translated into English by Laser Lederhendler. Speaker, as you know, the Giller is the most prestigious and the richest of all Canadian literary awards. All six finalists receive $10,000, and the winner gets the top prize of $100,000. The Party Wall is already the winner of the Distinguished France Quebec Prize and has been nominated for the Quebec Booksellers Prize. Last year, Biblioasis had two books chosen as Giller finalists, Anna Connor Schofield's Martin John and Samuel Archibald's Arvita. The small independent publishing house also had another book in this year's Giller Long List. That was The Two of Us by Kathy Page. This year's Scotiabank Giller Prize will be awarded live on CBC television on the 7th of November at 9 o'clock. Since 2004, Biblioasis has been publishing the very best in contemporary fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and literature in transla translation. So, Speaker, congratulations once again to Biblioasis publisher Dan Wells, his very talented staff and colleagues, and to Kathleen LaRue for the party wall, and good luck with this year's Scotiabank Giller Prize. Thank you. The speaker's Book Award's pretty good, too, you know. The, uh, Member statements, the member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, earlier this month in my riding of Kingston and the Islands, we celebrated the Kingston Multicultural Arts Festival. This festival is one of my absolute favorite events of the year because it offers an incredible opportunity to actually experience and celebrate in the rich culture and diversity of the Kingston community. The festival was organized by the Kingston Immigration Partnership, which continually strives to make our community more welcoming for immigrants. While participating in all the activities and events the festival had to offer, it was clear how the celebration is truly a part of our community's continued effort to make Kingston inclusive and welcoming for all newcomers and to ensure that they feel at home in our community. With approximately 5,000 visitors and 20 ethnocultural associations participating, this year's festival was one of the most successful to date. I was absolutely thrilled to see a Syrian booth this year, and it was incredibly heartwarming to see how much pride they have in their culture and how many people attended at their booth. Every booth was swarming with people indulging in delicious food, admiring traditional costumes, and sharing stories of shared culture abound. And of course, I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to everyone who shared and showcased all of the unique aspects of their cultural identity with our community. It is because of the hard work and dedication of our community that this festival was possible. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from the PM Corp. Thank you very much, Speaker. Every four years in this place, we seek re-election. But every four years around the world, 
while we celebrate the Olympics and the goodwill that comes with it. This past summer in the PM Carlton, we had two tremendous world-class athletes compete in the Olympics in Rio. Seiku Cabot in the 110-meter hurdles and Erica Selton Rich Hodgson in the 200 meter independent med in individual medley. We had a grand send off speaker at the Barhaven Legion with over 150 people. Seiku appeared live, while Erica, who had already landed in Rio, joined us to talk to Seiku via Skype. It was incredible to see the kids there wearing the red and white and cheering for our country. We have viewing parties with their friends, their families, and their fans, and they were incredible, and I thank Boston Pizza and Barhaven for hosting them. But more importantly than just being tremendous athlete speaker, these two young athletes, Seiku Kaba and Erica Selton Rich Hodgson, have tremendous character, proving that sometimes a gold medal is wonderful, but having a heart of gold is more important. Two quick stories before I finish, Speaker. Seiku Kaba joined me on Canada Day at 13 events in the PN Carlton. At each one of them, he ran with the kids, he did hurdle demonstrations, and he proved to them that giving back to your community is probably the best thing you could ever do as an athlete or just a member of your community. And secondly, Speaker Herica Selton Rich Hodgson, as a young woman in her early 20s, indicated that she had battled depression. And I got to meet her as she spoke at a women's mental health run in Ottawa. Their courage, their conviction, and their talent make them Olympians in my heart forever. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, I had the privilege of being with Andrew Horvath, our leader, and the university students from Niagara in a round table at Brock University. You would be shocked to hear what these students are going through because of their student debt. Some of them are working two and three jobs to try and avoid a debt they won't be able to pay back. The stress is unbelievable. You can see they don't even have the time to enjoy their young lives because they're working so hard to either avoid debt or pay it back. To make matters worse, once they graduate, they can barely find a job. Mr. Speaker, we need to take this opportunity to help our young people succeed. The lives of our children and grandchildren are supposed to be better than ours. It is our responsibility to create a better world for them. I was moved by what these young people had to say, and I want to tell the Premier this. You need to do a better job at creating opportunity for these young people. We told them to work hard and get an education that so many people in my generation never had a chance to. So they did that, and now they have no job and a debt they can't pay. Mr. Speaker, this government made over $25 million in interest from student loans last year. The government should not be profiting on the backs of our children and our grandchildren. I urge this government to stand with the NDP in removing the interest for student loans, reducing our skyrocketing tuition fees, and actually creating Thank job you. opportunities for these young people who are working so hard to make a better life for themselves. Thank you very much. Further member statements? The member from Brampton, Brampton Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Vianna Fan Family Foundation Awards recognize extraordinary contributions made by frontline staff workers who work at the United Way of, in the Peel Region and other funded agencies. These peer-nominated awards showcase the remarkable dedication, creativity, and team spirit. The awards are made possible thanks to a generous donation from Raksha Bayana and the Bayana Family Foundation. As a former member of the United Way of Toronto's Board of Trustees, Raksha is a dedicated community volunteer and a passionate champion for the recognition of frontline workers who make a difference in the community every day. Raksha Bayana and her husband Madan immigrated to Canada in the mid-1970s. Raksha, Raksha took on her first job in Canada as a therapist and learned about the United Way through this. The foundation currently works with the United Way in Toronto, Peel, York, and the Lower Mainland in Vancouver. They are not just a funder, but a mobilizer of community and social action. Madan Bayana sought and achieved the Canadian dream with his business, Inscape. The 2016 Bayana Awards were presented to recipients in June to acknowledge the achievements in each of the following categories, with a total of, for the total for each category. The Dedication Awards, the Innovation and Creativity Awards, and the Leadership Awards. 
Melissa Luca, Nexus Youth Centre, Jim, Jin Zhang from Spectra Healthline, Stacey Lynn Sterling, March of Dimes Canada, all received the dedication award. Where Kamisha Thomas and, uh, from Vita Centre and Kelly Remney from Caledon Parent, Ch Parent Children Centre received the leadership award. And in innovation and creativity, Nirpal Bangu from Punjabi Community Health Services, Mona Fateh from Newcomer Centre Appeal, and Carol Medhurst from Caledon Parent Child Centre were recognized. There was also a dedication award for the United Way staff, which was awarded to Ma'am Deborah, coordinator of the Black Community Advisory Council. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It is now time for.